name is Barnabas. Bertha. Sochi. David. Roman. From Catonsville, Maryland. Welcome, Welcome to the, the Greater Baltimore Church. Hey. Hi. Good morning and welcome to the Greater Baltimore Church online service. My name is David Chukweke. And I'm Faith Bender. We're so glad to have you here with us this morning. So Faith, what's on the agenda for today? Well, this morning, we will be engaging in a wonderful time of worship, hearing an impactful lesson, and remembering Jesus' sacrifice on the cross during a time of communion. Is there anything for the children today? Of course, we will have a super fun and engaging children's worship song to get us up on our feet. And if you're visiting with us today, you're truly our honored guest. Please go click on Get Connected on our website, thegreaterbaltimorechurch.org, in order to see the amazing things we do in Baltimore. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on our YouTube channel. And also like and share if you're with us on Facebook to engage more people with our services. So sit back and enjoy service. Bye. Bye. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us drink wine together on our knees. Let us drink wine together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Right. 
God from whom all blessings flow Praise Him all creatures here below Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I will offer a sacrifice of praise. I know it's gonna cost me. The cost not greater than the cross where you bought me. I was lost and you sought me. I was ignorant, you taught me. I was impotent against my enemies who fought for me. I exist for your glory, never for mine. I never would shine if it wasn't for your spirit inside. You made me alive when I was dead in trespasses. The passion of Christ left my sin in the past tense. Every good and perfect gift comes from your hand. You set me back to course when I run from your plan. No excuse to refuse to lift my voice. Because the gospel is true, there's always reason to rejoice. And that don't mean that my sorrow was inconspicuous. But when I grieve, I got a greater joy in the midst of it. Joy of knowing I will see you face to face. And it's all to the praise of your glorious grace. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly 
God, full of glory and grace, open in me a fountain of faithful praise. Let it flow from the depths of my heart like great lakes. Let my soul be the sweetness that spreads its fragrance. Save me from the love of the world that you created. More than a God whose beautiful hands made it. Break me from pride and consecrate me. Make me feel the weight of my sin, sorrow, and safety. Let me sing with the saints of your great salvation and join in the songs of all creation. Let the winds obey the oceans, wave the mountains, cave. Let every star you place display grace. Let my speech to the same as the skies proclaim that everything that has life and breath bless your name let the earth be the stage where all creation aims to heaven and endless praises and adoration praise god from whom all blessings flow praise him all creatures here below Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Welcome and thank you for joining us at this, the beginning of the holiday season. We are the Greater Baltimore Church and it's a pleasure to be with you today. So glad to be with you this morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching this message. Uh, it is uh, the time of Thanksgiving and we are so grateful uh, to be able to present uh, this time and be with you guys in fellowship. We hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving filled with fun, food, family and friends. And for those who have lost a loved one this year, and this time has been a little bit more difficult than yeah. usual, or those that are celebrating the anniversary of a lost one, our prayers are with you. We understand the pain that accompanies a loss at this time. You know, we just had an opportunity to travel to Ethiopia, and uh, what an amazing time it was. I want to thank the church uh, for the missions and how it supports both Ethiopia and India and uh, the different different endeavors that we have throughout the course of the year uh, just wanting to serve and uh, it was a great time and we learned a lot saw a lot we have a few pictures here for you to, so you can see I mean we sent a bunch of stuff through Instagram uh, but wanted to share these with you this morning as well the church there is doing well but please keep them in your prayers as they're maturing and going through a time of transition yeah. We also have some pictures of our new church in Gambala. Yeah. We thank you so much for the hard work of the church in Addis as they have helped to strengthen the faith and to baptize disciples there in Gambala. Thank you so much, Ethiopia, for all of your hard work. Yeah, you know, the uh, we've talked about this a little bit. Um, certainly, Grace has talked about it some. It just, it just what an amazing opportunity it was to be able to plant the church in the Gambala. And really, there was a church there already, a restoration church there in Gambala that reached out to Addis Ababa asking for help. And they were able to baptize some and just extend the right hand of fellowship to others. And the church is growing. God is doing great things in Ethiopia. And again, we want to thank the church here in Greater Baltimore for your hard work, your sacrifice, your love of your giving that is why that is part of why this is happening certainly we know this is to the glory of God and it's God's hand but certainly we also know that it's your hard work and your faith that's allowing this to happen thank you that is why this time of the year is so important to all of us here at Greater Baltimore Church it is the beginning of the Thanksgiving season it is a time to really reflect on the past year, yep, the situation, yep. the circumstances, the people that have passed through our lives, the friendships that we've made, and to just sit back and give a time of praise and thanks to God. A time to honor God as he has moved in each and every one of our lives. A time to give thanks. You know, we, um, 
this is a tough time of year in some ways. I mean, it's uh, certainly it's celebratory, and you know we're heading to the Christmas season. And, and for many, uh, and myself included, I love I love this time of year. I've already turned on the Christmas music and, and started to put up Christmas decorations. And yet, when you look around the world as we travel through Ethiopia, we, we do see uh, there are a lot of challenges. It, uh, certainly, we have the war with Hamas and, and Israel, and we have the war in Ukraine and Russia, and there are other wars going on and different things and challenges throughout the world. And so, as we celebrate, we also remember there are people that are less fortunate than us and going through difficult times, and there's so much, so much that we have to be thankful for. We've been studying a few things this year in the Greater Baltimore Church. And as we come to the end of the year, we've been focusing on community. Yeah. And as our community grows here, one of the things that is and needs to continue to be a strength in us is our ability to give thanks to God, not only for his mercy and grace, but for putting in us in a community in which we can be thankful for each other. Yeah, you know, we certainly love the Greater Baltimore community. We're thankful for that. And as we uh, are remembering our travels to Ethiopia, one of the things that struck me, I think Dion and I, was just how simple things were. You know, there, it, there wasn't uh, any electronics. There, were, there wasn't even a sound system. Uh, no PowerPoints to, to fiddle with. Uh, they didn't have a Eugene or a man in the chair, men in the chair. We have lots of those here in Greater Baltimore. Uh, there's just a, simply a church service where people gathered uh, with the, the psalm book that I pulled up on the screen. You know, they just had these raggedy tag psalm books that they were singing from. They were so thankful just to be together and to be singing and to gather and to hear the word of God preached. And, and it reminds me that uh, our faith needs to be simple. Um, that we need to be thankful for what God is doing. And the simplicity of thankfulness, gratitude, and our faith can do something remarkable. So we're going to look, take a look at Romans 1 here in just a minute. Uh, I'm going to have my lovely wife read it because her voice is so charming and amazing. And uh, it's going to soothe you as you hear her voice. But we're going to read from Romans 1 starting in verse 18 to 25. As we begin to read, we are reading from the New International Version. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in their sinful desires to their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. What an amazing passage. What an incredible passage to read. And as we get into Romans 1 a little bit, there are, to me, kind of the secrets of a faithful walk and gratitude and, uh, you know, just uh, what it means to really serve God and honor him. And so one thing we need to understand about Romans is that uh, when Paul writes this letter, he hadn't visited Rome yet. He longed to visit Rome. And the church there probably was started by Jews who had been converted in Pentecost. So that's one thing to know. Uh, he's, he wants to visit Rome badly. So he writes this letter and, um, and really stating uh, the, some principles of faith. So they could understand that as well as it's an introduction about who Paul is. What an incredible introduction this is. And so we get into Romans 1. We get into uh, this, this statement of faith and, and, and humanity and really the necessity of God. That's kind of what we're looking at. Uh, the lostness of humanity and the necessity of God are stated within Romans 1. And what's really awesome, it starts off with this kind of scary statement. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godliness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth 
of their wickedness. And so initially we'd be like, oh my gosh, I never want to read the Bible again after reading that statement. But what we go on to read is about how God has certainly, we're going to face the wrath of God at some point. We're going to face this judgment and understanding that God is, clearly has given his love, his compassion, his grace, and all these things. But also there's a statement of judgment that we're going to have to realize and deal with. But he also says within this passage that God has given us the opportunity to know him because of all the creation. Since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen so that all people are without excuse. What an amazing, one of my favorite passages here. That God has certainly, you know, without a Bible, without the written word, God has made the statement of his, of his life of who he is, of what he represents, of his standard. All of these things are revealed through the things that God has created. And honestly, we have no excuse not to desire him, not to want him, not to walk with him, not to have a life with him. Uh, and so, yes, there'll be judgment, but God has allowed us uh, to, to know him just simply from the things he's created in a lot of ways, his divine natures and internal qualities. These things are revealed so that we would desire and want a relationship with God. So the, the hole in our heart, the questions that we have can be filled and we can desire God before the judgment, we can make the right decisions. I think this is important for us to really meditate on again at this time of the year. In our day and age, when technology is such a vital and important yeah. part of our lives, it's very easy to overlook, it's very easy to miss the simple things that point us back to God. We are a people that crave knowledge, we mm. crave truth, Come on, that's we right. crave a lot of things, but we don't always crave God. And what God is saying to us is that we need to be careful. Because in our desires, we can crave the things that God has given us more than we desire God. And in so doing, lead our lives to destruction. I think it's very, very important that we don't allow the things that we have built, the things that we have accomplished, to ever take the place yeah. of the God who mm. has blessed Come us on. and given us those things. And it's awesome because God makes this statement about who he is and that we can know him and then says in verse 21, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. And so he's intimating from the first part that there is a sense of knowledge of God because of what he's done. He's an eternal power and his deity and his creation. So we have a knowledge of God, but though they knew God, and this applies to us as well, they didn't. Uh, further that relationship by honoring him and acknowledging him and, and serving him and they didn't give thanks to him and so because and this is the thing I've told my kids for years that uh, ingratitude and unthankfulness and being in a place a thankless living a thankless life leads to all type of depravity in our lives and so they didn't give thanks to God, and so the rest of their lives, they exchanged, it says, the glory of an immortal God with images to look like mortal men. They exchanged God's image and God's qualities, and they personified things, and they worshiped those things. We, we tend to do that today, either with our jobs or careers or sports or the things that we are, uh, you know, invested in. And therefore, God gave them over their sinful desires. Now, I love verse 25. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. When we get to that place where we don't glorify God, we don't honor him, we don't serve him, we don't worship him, we don't celebrate, we don't magnify him, we don't show his worthiness or acknowledge him, this is a downward spiral in our lives, in our faith, and it has no end if we don't stop it and begin to recognize who God is and what he's done in our lives and then begin to give thanks to him, gratitude for all that he's sacrificed and done for every one of us. This is a question that I think each and every one of us will ask ourselves. Why am I here? Hmm. What is my purpose? What is life? What is the meaning of life? Why am I here? Right. God has allowed us to have those questions, hoping that it will lead us to his power, 
his majesty, his glory in our lives. But for many of us, the temptation will be there to really look at ourselves as God, to look at ourselves and the things that we've created or the things that we've done, and to really honor ourselves and our talents yeah. above God. Sure. And sure. God warns us because he says in that mode of thinking, we become darkened, mm. our thoughts become futile, wow. and he even lists some of the things. He says greed. One would never think that greed can be a darkened side of us, but it can. Come on. Think about the person that's greedy. Nothing is ever enough. Mm. No matter how much you have, you want more. To the point that you can envy someone their gifts rather than being thankful for your own. That is greed. But if we're not careful, we can teach it to our children, we can live it within ourselves, and we can glorify those that are greedy. Not knowing that in the dark recesses of their minds, they're becoming more darkened, life and their thinking is becoming more futile. God warns us to stay away from this. And the only way to stay away from this is to remember always to give praise and to give thanks to God himself for everything that we have. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. I think uh, one of the things to think about is that this lack of gratitude uh, can make the Christian life confusing and unbearable. Uh, it really does. And, you know, there have been studies on this, and I, I don't have the studies in front of me, but there are many studies on why gratitude and thankfulness are so important. Uh, there's a difference between knowing God and living a life to glorify him. Uh, there's a difference between knowing the substance of God and knowing the character of God and understanding his wrath and the qualities of his love. And we can even know salvation, but really not we working and living to praise and glorify God with our thinking and our lives every single day. Uh, this is what this passage is talking about. And that, that honor of God, that glorifying God, that living to acknowledge him leads to a thankful life, a rich understanding of a thankful life you know, Thanksgiving can be a confusing time as well for people. I mean, there's a lot of debate on what Thanksgiving should represent uh, the holiday. But for the Christian, there should be no confusion. We should understand what Thanksgiving is, and we should be grateful for what God has done. And we should be living a life to honor and glorify him and acknowledge his greatness and just all that he represents in our lives. We have so much to be thankful for. And if you're not a Christian, if you're wondering about, the, about Christianity and whether you should live that life, I want you to begin to think in your minds and your hearts just what you can be grateful for and how you got to the place where, where, where something happened, something miraculous has happened. And often we don't acknowledge the miraculous things. But again, God's eternal power, his invisible qualities have allowed us to reach a place where the miraculous has happened in our lives and we can be thankful for God moving in such a powerful way. That is what thankfulness is all about. That's what gratitude is all about. And I pray that as we Christians and, and or not, we don't... Uh, for any minute pretend that everyone that hears these messages has come to, come to faith. Our hope is that you will. And coming to faith has a lot to do with understanding who God is and understanding how he's worked and how much he loves you and then being thankful for that in a life that acknowledges that thankfulness by doing whatever we can to serve and live out a relationship with God. Being thankful doesn't mean that one's life will be without pain mm. or hurt or disappointment. But it does take an emotionally and spiritually mature person to understand yeah. that this is a part of the journey of life. You know, in this time of the year, one of the favorite ways for me to connect with God is through music. Mm. And Cece Winans has a song called The Goodness of God. And if you've ever seen the video, and if you've not, I encourage you to see it. She sits and she reminisces on her life and the goodness of God. And there is a phrase in her song that says, the goodness of God is running after her. Mm. And I believe that's so true. When we stop to meditate on God, we see that the goodness of God is running after us. There's so many times that in our lives we've had difficult moments, challenging moments, even in some of our loss, and we wonder where God is. 
And over time, we realized God was always there. Right. But in our hurt, our disappointment, and our pain, we often don't see the hand of God. We don't see the grace of God. We don't see the mercy of God. And then we blame God. We get angry with God. We get disappointed with God. And we shut ourselves down rather than stopping and meditating on the fact that God is always there. The Bible defines God as God is love. Yeah. And because God is love, he hurts when we hurt. When we hurt, he understands our pain. Yep. And he never leaves us alone. He always sends the right person or the right gift to remind us that he is there. Yeah. So as you meditate this holiday season on the community that you're a part of, on the family that you're a part of, on the friends that you have, do not forget to give glory and thanks to God. You know, I wanted to say, before Dion's going to read something here. Uh, but she reminded me that, uh, you know, we do have a lot of struggles. There is a lot of pain. There are a lot of challenges. Uh, and one of the only journals that we keep is a thank you journal because we want to be reminded of how God has worked in our lives. And again, whether you're a person of faith or not, I think that type of a journal um, kind of inspires and instructs and leads you to a place to understand, again, the miracles in your life that you didn't generate them, that I didn't generate them, that they came from something else, something more powerful than myself. And so we keep a thankful journal, a thank, a thank you journal, just reminding us of all the good things that have happened in our lives, even though there can be challenges, even though there can be hard times. We have to be reminded because if not careful, we will remember and hold on to the evil of this world more so than the good. And there is good, and God is good, and God is working. And we have to be reminded and be thankful for what God is doing in each and every one of our lives. So let me begin by first saying thank you for allowing us to be with you at this time. Thank you for allowing us in your home to really hopefully inspire you to take this time to meditate and be thankful. You know, when I think about my life, I think that I am thankful to God. When I describe my childhood to many friends, words that are used or shared with me are um, splintered, broken, mm. left behind, child of divorced, parents abandoned. That was not how I thought of myself growing up. I just thought I was a child and by my culture, these things happen. But in my nature, I was thankful. When I think of how many children do not live to an adult life, I am thankful. That's right. So yep. whether I am a child of divorced parents or I've been abandoned, I am thankful that I've made it through my adulthood. When I look at myself, I see that I am made in the image of God. I have learned that even though I'm made in the image of God, my life will not be without hurt and disappointment. Yeah. But I'm thankful for the friends that I've made along the way. I'm thankful for how God has defined himself, allowing me to graduate from college, protecting me through my life, allowing me to be introduced to a faith that has grown in my heart and has allowed me to find my husband through faith and to raise to find a wonderful my children man. Let me tell you through you. faith. <laughs> In God's community, I've learned family. In God's community, I've learned to be healed. In God's community, through the people that God has put in my life, I am thankful. I am thankful for the New York City Church in which my faith began. I'm thankful that under the years of Stephen Lisa Johnson, we grew in our faith. Was it perfect? Absolutely not. But I am thankful that God saw fit, that that was the time that I needed to grow. I'm thankful for every relationship, every person that influenced me through that time. I'm thankful for Dale and Thais Porter, who when we decided to move to Baltimore, moved their entire life to come and be with us, to help strengthen yeah. and shepherd the church here in Baltimore. I am thankful for the relationship, the staff, and the friends that we now have in Baltimore. I am thankful for our children, each and every one of them that God has allowed to come to faith and have grown up as young women of faith. There has been many times in our lives that we have been disappointed, yeah. hurt, we've disappointed each other, we've been disappointed by people, 
We've disappointed others. Yes. But through it all, God has been with us. And today, as we are looking and coming towards the end of 2023, we are thankful. Hmm. We are thankful for every hurt, every disappointment, everything that has pulled us closer to God, everything that has taught us to glorify God, everything that has taught us to be thankful Amen. to God. So we hope that as this year comes to a close, you will find the time to sit, to meditate, to really reminisce on who God is in your life, and even through the hurts and disappointments, look for him. He was always there. Wow, it's awesome. I love this woman. She's an encourager and inspirer. I'm so thankful for her. So grateful for what God has given us. And I just want to close with this passage in Isaiah 63, verse 7. I will tell of the kindnesses of the Lord, the deeds for which he is to be praised. According to all the Lord has done for us, yes, the many good things he has done. For the house of Israel, according to his compassion and many kindnesses. You know, <laughs> kindnesses means that God has done many kind things in our lives. He is an amazing God. We have so much to be grateful for. We have so much to thank him for. And I just want to encourage us and encourage each other that we here need to remember, as Romans 1 stated, that again, that downward spiral starts when we live in ingratitude, we don't glorify God, and we don't give thanks to our God. Let's give thanks to him. Let's honor him. Let's praise him. And uh, I want to leave us, of course, with a bento box, uh, a little take-home. That's what we do now, a little take-home box for you of things you can, can practice or take from this message today. And here are three things just to put in the bento box for you today. Meditate on the goodness of God in your life and what it means to glorify him. Number two, meditate on your relationship with God and what you can be thankful for. So the first one is that we get to think about the goodness of God and glorify God. And the second one is to remember to be thankful for all that God has done. And lastly, number three, meditate on situations, people, and relationships and how they have been a blessing in your life. And praise God and be thankful. Please remember also that as we take communion, this is an act of kindness from God. Yes. God gave us his son. God allowed his son to take on the form of man, to walk on the earth and to show us and to model for us that we can love God in spite of the challenges that will face us. And then when he was finished, he sacrificed his life so that we can enter into a relationship with God and then spend eternity with God in heaven. This is an amazing act of kindness that God has given us. So let us participate in this communion with our hearts filled with joy for the mm. God that loves us. It's awesome. Let's go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful, uh, not only for the season, the season of Thanksgiving, which is a holiday, but the season of Thanksgiving giving that is a life committed to you and honoring and glorifying your name. Let us live in that season always, always giving of ourselves, trusting in you, recognizing what you have done, and being grateful. We are thankful for the cross. We're thankful for your son's sacrifice for us to have forgiveness of sins. And we're thankful for the opportunity to take the communion to remember you. And we ask all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
Hi there, I'm Dorian Lorenzo, and this is my wonderful fiance, Loretta Grant. And we have the honor of bringing out the announcements today. So first off, we have a midweek announcement. It'll be this Wednesday, 7.30 at the building, and this will be an all women's midweek. Go women! <laughs> yes. Next, this upcoming Saturday, December the 2nd, at from 7.30 to 10.30, we'll be having a salsa night fundraiser for Bolivia. It'll be a good time to just enjoy the culture and some physicality of dancing too. We have, it'll be $15, and you can contact Max Berrigan or Whitney Lagula and the registrations on the Church Center app. Then we have something exciting coming up um, that we're introducing. It's GBC Community Wellness Classes. These will be led in part by Aja or Ray, so if you have questions, talk to them. But we'll be offering free exercise courses, nutrition, challenges, and meal plan ideas. Hmm. Great tools for your toolbox in staying fit and healthy during the holiday winter months. If you're interested, please fill out the form in your email that was sent out so that they get a head count of who's interested. And then I have a Thanksgiving baskets update. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much to everyone who participated. Thank you for your generosity and your sacrifice from the people who went shopping to the people who loaded up the cars um, on Sunday afternoon. We really appreciate it and we couldn't have done it without you. Absolutely. On behalf of Michael and Rebecca Tucker, I would like to shout out Lisa and John Creary for the second year taking lead shopping uh, for the preparation of 25 Hope Funded Baskets, and also to Al Essien for the funding and preparation of 50 baskets. So our count is down from last year, but we were able to give 226 Thanksgiving baskets distributed among seven organizations throughout Baltimore. And so again, thank you so much and great job guys. Nice. Yeah, that was awesome. And the last thing we have for y'all is today after service will be the Teen Cafe fundraiser. So after service, make sure to go out there, look for the teens, help support them. And yeah, we hope you have a great rest of service. Bye. Bye. <laughs> wow, wasn't that amazing service? I told you it'd be good. And if you haven't done so, please hit that like and subscribe button and share it with a friend. Share the amazingness. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever you got, we got it. Hit and follow. Can't wait to see you next week. Bye. Bye. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea. Revealing your majesty From the colors of fall To the fragrance of spring Every creature unique In the song that it sings All exclaiming Indescribable Uncontainable You place the stars in the sky And you know them by name You are amazing Oh, powerful Untamable Awestruck we fall to our knees As we humbly proclaim You are sees a lightning bolts and tells them where they should go or sees heavenly storehouses laden with snow who imagined the sun and gives source to its life yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night None can fathom Indescribable
we fall to our knees.